So, last time I talked about Tateshi Danpei, also known as Fencing Master, which released in 1950. It was taken from a screenplay written by Akira Kurosawa. The screenplay was in turn taken from a Koen Hasegawa 1949 play of the same name. And before I get into the film, both films are available now subtitled in English on SamuraiDVD.com. It's the only place to get it. In case you didn't know, it's simply the best place to buy Samurai films. A lot of these films you won't even see on Amazon or eBay, so definitely check it out. And be sure to use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES at checkout. So if I'm going to be honest, I didn't really enjoy the 1950 version of Tateshi Danpei. I stated in my last video that it was boring and it's a bit confusing. So actually it's surprising that I even decided to give the 1962 version a chance. But after seeing it, I could say that I definitely like it more, it's more emotional, it's more interesting, and it just seems a lot more like a Kurosawa film. I definitely see vibes of Redbeard and Dersu Uzawa. This is where you get the older character type and he's interacting with a younger individual. And the older character used to be at the top of his game, but now he's just being defeated by the change of time. It seems like a theme that Kurosawa shows a lot in his films. Even Ron depicted something very similar. But what's nice about this film is it shows Chambara or Samurai films in its infancy. Basically how it started out as a theater play with a very stylized sword fighting as a focus. And later how the sword fighting became more realistic looking and took sort of a step back in favor of more drama and story. The character of Dante in this is definitely the old school way, and Raizo Ichikawa's character shows the new way. I still feel like the character of Dante in this is just a jerk. Especially just how he leaves his sick wife behind. You know, he chooses his passion over everyone that's close to him. And the worst thing is when he does leave his job, he doesn't leave it because of his sick wife. Instead, it's just because he feels like he's unneeded and he's not getting his way. But even though he's just a giant jerk, there are still some moments where I did feel bad for him. There's a rather touching scene where he's just been rejected and he's just sitting there in the dark, crying alone. And of course some guy just comes over and just kicks him off the rug. It's like being kicked while you're already down. It's funny how that happens in real life. But this is very much the theme of the film. It's an ushering out of the old for the new. Something Kurosawa does explore a lot. The film itself plays a lot like a tragedy. It looks symbolically at those that are viewed as out of date in a changing Japan. While other filmmakers consider the issues of survival and adapting to the changes that have just been sweeping Japan since the Meiji Restoration, Kurosawa on the other hand came from a samurai family, and he just saw the sadness of those changes, and just the unhappiness of those who could not change with the times. And it's probably just because they remain dedicated to those ideals of the past, and they died with them. 
This is definitely just an overlooked feature. Both lead performances are very memorable. I also just really enjoyed seeing Raizo Ichikawa in glasses. He's known as the master, which is the lead director or star of the theater company. And because of that, he's just stubborn, but he's still always calm and cool. Especially in just how he wants his plays to just focus more on story rather than what Dompei wants is all-out action and sword fighting. And when Dompei doesn't get his way, he just gets a temper tantrum. You know, he acts like a child almost. <laughs> It's kind of funny how the old man in this is the one that wants all the action, and the younger guy is the one that wants less action and more drama. The very nature of Kurosawa's scripts tend to lean on the characteristics of a person's focus, and this film definitely treats the centerpiece of the story with as much respect and nuance as any of his other scripts. There's definitely a soul at the center of this feature, and it kind of gets lost in just the time period alone, but it reflects a standard that's just rarely matched by any other. I think it's worth seeking out, mostly if you're just a Kurosawa fan. If you haven't seen any of Kurosawa's other films, definitely see those first because they're definitely better. This is kind of, you know, the leftovers. Once you've already experienced everything, then you could check this one out and appreciate it like me. But if you're gonna experience the story, definitely watch the 1962 remake. The one with Raizo Ichikawa. It's way better, it's better made, and I think it's the closest to just seeming like a Kurosawa film. If you want it, you can get it on SamuraiDVD.com. I'll provide a link. Don't forget to use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES at checkout. And like always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.